Hey everyone, we got the new Fun Jungle book right here. Today we're going to be having a full review of this book. And we're starting right now. What's up guys? Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here with entertainment to discover new things, tutorials, and more, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps out a ton. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments section below. Now let's get started. Today, we're going to be going over the plot of Bear Bottom. We're going to be going over the characters, all that stuff that's included in the plot, the storyline, all of that. I'm going to go over the components, or like the pros and cons of the book, like what I thought made it good, maybe a couple complaints that I have about it, things I didn't like. I'm going to go over connections I had to the book, like what connected for me, what you might find as a connection. And we're going to go over my overall rating, like what I overall thought of the book. So now let's get started and go over the plot. So as long-term fans of Fun Jungle may know, this is a mystery series. And so once again, Bear Bottom is a mystery. And more like two mysteries. There's the main mystery, and then there's kind of like the smaller mystery going on underneath it. Before I can talk about the mysteries, I should back up a little bit to give you context where this is happening. This is happening up in Montana, up by Yellowstone Park. Teddy and his family is staying with the McCrackerins at one of their friends' ranches. So Teddy is up in the middle of the night using the bathroom when he walks back and he finds a bear in his house. I mean, how shocking would that be to find a bear in your house? And so as you would expect, Teddy freaks out. And everyone freaks out and they kind of just try to get the bear out however they can. But the bear breaks into one of the rooms first and appears to eat one of the necklaces. So now Teddy has to try and figure out what actually happened to the necklace because JJ is upset about that. He's like, what happened to my wife's necklace? And they have, to, and Teddy has to try and figure that out. And on top of that, someone is stealing the ranch's buffalo. A couple have gone missing now, and Teddy also has to try and figure out what happened to them. And as you, as long-term fans would know, nothing good ever happens to Teddy while he's investigating. Something always comes up, something bad happens, he gets in danger. It just doesn't tend to go super well for Teddy. And so Teddy has to try and figure this out while also trying to keep out of trouble like he usually does. So this book is realistic fiction like all the other Fun Jungle books. And the characters, there's really the two main characters that are always the main characters. There's Teddy, who is, whose parents work at Fun Jungle. And there's Summer McCracken, who is Teddy's boyfriend. And her parents own Fun Jungle. They're kind of boyfriend and girlfriend, not really though. But anyway, now I'm gonna let's see what the book has to say about the plot. We're gonna read the blurb. Bulls and bison and bears, oh my! Teddy Fitzroy, his family, and some other Fun Jungle employees have been invited to visit a bison ranch just outside Yellowstone National Park. The Fun Jungle's owner, J.J. McCracken, is considered position. but as usual, trouble isn't far behind. The ranch is endangered bison have been mysteriously mis disappearing. And then a massive local grizzly bear named Sasquatch breaks into the house, causing chaos. In the aftermath, Candace McCracken discovers that an exceptionally expensive sapphire necklace has vanished. Was it stolen, or did Sasquatch eat it, and if so, can it be recovered? And what's happening to the bison? With over a dozen suspects, it's up to Teddy to, to detangle this hairy situation before his family or friends or any more expensive ob objects become dinner. And that's a pretty funny blurb and it sums it up at the same time. And so speaking of funny, now let's go into the components of how funny this book was. So this book was really funny in my opinion. There were lots of funny moments as always. Do It Gibbs does a good job of making it funny. One of the main funny points I found in this book was the tourist. And this is actually true. This actually happens and this is a term called Torons. And it's basically tourists who are dumb and do things they shouldn't be doing. And the reason this was funny because when they were talking to one of the parks, when you just had to keep stopping and shout, she's like, no, don't put your litter inside the geyser. No, you do not go touch the bison and that sort of thing. And it's just hilarious to think that people actually do that. I mean, it's sad, but it's hilarious since you stop. She says, stop talking to Teddy for a moment. She's like, no, 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 come back over here. No, you do not go take a, a bath in the geyser. It is not a hot tub. 
It's just so hilarious to listen to that. Alongside that, there were also other like funny witty remarks that happened, and this that sort of thing that makes the book super funny. This book was also super exciting. It was super fast paced and exciting. It really drives you and captivates you and makes you want to keep reading the book. And this makes a great book so if it can draw you in like that. And it knows you know it's a good book if it can keep you reading. If you can't put the book down, it's a great book. And that and this book totally qualifies in that. It was a really fast paced book that kept me drawing in. Cause one thing would happen, another thing would happen, and this other thing would happen. Like it would just keep you going. Like it's each chapter would end on a cliffhanger, like, so you will, you would keep reading because you had to know what happened next, because some exciting event would be about to happen, or they just heard some really bad news, or that sort of thing. But there is a downside to it being super fast-paced. I felt like I missed some things, like this book was super fast-paced in some parts. I feel like I missed some things, like at the end of the story, I, I feel like I missed a little bit of how he solved it, like, what exactly he, like, how he solved it and who it was. Like, that might have just been, that might be on me, read, like, reading too fast, even though it is fast-paced. But that could also be him overlooking that. That was my, that's really my only complaint about this book, is that I feel like I missed some things because it was so fast-paced, it was hard to keep track of a couple things in them. But other than that, I mean, I'm just being nitpicky. This is a really well-written book. Because, like, Stuart Gibbs is just an amazing author. He's written so many series. He's a best-selling author. He's also written the Spy School series, Moonbase Alpha, the Charlie Thorne, and there's something else I'm thinking of that I can't remember right now. But he's written a bunch of series, and many of his series are still going. This is the seventh Fun Jungle book, I think. Let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yes, yeah, a seven Fun Jungle book series, and he's not running out of ideas. He's shifting it a little bit, but he's keeping it the same in a way. So it's obvious that it's he's such a good writer. He can keep it going, and so many fans are like this. It's, he's one of my favorite authors of all time. Like if you if you love realistic fiction or science fiction in some cases, like fast paced adventure books. He is for you. He is just an amazing author in that area. He writes so well, and I love him. Like, I was being nitpicky up there a little bit. That's probably on me. Because he's so, he's well, he's a right, he's a really good author. He thinks these things through and everything. And he's a fun guy, too. So now, talk about connections. Teddy is around the same age as me, 12 to 13. He's in that area, too. So that alone just adds for connections. If you're the same age, as one of the characters in one of the books you really like to read, you really feel a connection to it because you're just like them. Like, I'm a boy, Teddy's a boy, Teddy's 12 is 13 is. I'm also in that area, I'm gonna read 13 really soon, months. So you, that alone adds connection because you can feel like sometimes you have the same struggles at that age or that sort of thing. And that's, you just love a book if you're the same age as the character because that's just that's just how it works. If you are the same age as the character, you just really connect to it. Which is why I recommend this book for like 10 to 13 ish probably. And there's also a lot of animals in here. Like I love animals and so if you if you love animals, you're gonna love this book. Fun Jungle, the entire series is about a zoo. So it's about a zoo park sort of thing. So if you love animals, this is just the perfect series for you, man. Hands down, perfect series. And so to wrap that up, my overall rating, I'm gonna give that five stars. Like I don't wanna be nitpicky. This is this is a really good book. I loved it. It was just yet another win for Stuart Gibbs. And I would just recommend it for you if you love animals, if you're the same age group as Teddy. I recommend this for like 10 to 13 probably. This is like one of my all time favorite books because it's up there with my favorite author. I can't pick a favorite book, but this is up there because it's by Stuart Gibbs. And so just that's about all I have for you guys today. So now you know the entire plot of the book, the setting, all of that, some of the pros and cons of this book, and my overall rating plus connections. So thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs>
Thank you.